This is the biggest mistakes I see people do when they retouch their photo. I'm gonna show you five mistakes that I see over and over again, from the least important to the most important. All right, so mistake number one. Okay, now I'm gonna take an example of a photo shoot that I did very early morning in Paris, and the sunrise was incredible for about two minutes. The colors were incredible, and I got a good exposure of the photo. But one of the mistakes I see a lot is people doing too much clarity. So too much clarity can give you a dramatic look, but you know, it's, it's, it's too much. It looks really over retouch. You know, when you want to show a photo to somebody, you don't want their emotion to be, oh, it's great, but you Photoshopped it, didn't you? You don't want that. Error number two that I see so many times is over sharpening. I understand sharpening can be cool, but this photo is way, way over sharpened. I mean, it's over the top. That's why I'm zooming in so you can see. And it just like, it hurts my eyes so much it's over sharpened. Mistake number three is wrong white balance. White balance is one of the slider that's gonna influence the most your photo. You know, you really have to remember how the colors wear because white balance is completely arbitrary. It is an artistic decision. This morning, for about one minute, the colors were very yellow and very orange. And I'm gonna show you, if you stand till the end, how I actually retouch properly this photo with five simple steps. Mistake number four, too much saturation. Too much saturation is a very common mistake. And believe me, I've been guilty of all these mistakes. You know, after working with galleries for about 10 years, you know, I see the problem. You know, we all love very vibrant colors, but it's really a mistake to do that. Mistake number five is just no retouching or very low touching. I see some people, you know, they just go in there and, you know, they add a bit of saturation and, you know, boom, they call it a day underdeveloped photos. You don't want to go over retouch, but you don't want to go underdeveloped photos either. So I'm going to show you five steps that I use that has been working really well for me when I work for my galleries and I work with 120 galleries around the world. So step number one, step number one, just do your exposure. What I always do, especially if it's a properly exposed raw file, I open a shadow and I bring down the highlights. Now it's going to look weird and it's going to look sort of HDR. That's fine. By holding the option key on your keyboard and bringing back the blacks like this, what you see here in black is 100% black. You have set a black point, which is very important. And then you're just gonna reveal the photo with the whites, okay? Until you have an exposure that seems good. So that's step number one. Step number two, and please don't do this before you did the exposure because you cannot tell what colors look like if you didn't do the exposure right and that is white balance. So on this one, I'm just gonna go to daylight, see what it gives me, it's pretty good. Um, let's see, cloudy, yeah, cloudy is kinda cool. Shade, yeah, I, I, I think I wanna go for a very warm look, so I'm gonna go cloudy, I'm just gonna add a little bit of magenta. This is how I remember the colors were, they were very, very strong. Step number three is refining colors, and this one is optional. So I use this new feature in Lightroom, which I love. And it's the color, it's called point color in the color mixer. And you can go here and you can click, for example, on that magenta. And you're like, and you can change here how you want that magenta. Like, let's say I want it a little more orange, you know, but you have to be very gentle. Just move very small the slider like this. And then maybe I can do another one for the yellow. And I can make the yellow go a little more greenish, or I can make the yellow a little more yellow. You know, you have to go very subtle. On this one, it's not really needed. Before, after. Yeah, I just made the color a little more vibrant, but it's not very much needed on this one. It's not gonna make a big deal. Okay, step number four, dodge and burn. Now, I want people to be sucked into my photo, okay? And how do you do that? Well, I'm gonna, basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna darken the top and the bottom, and just with a brush, I'm gonna just relight some parts in the photo. It's gonna be incredible. It is amazing. It is incroyable. Vive Paris. Okay, so linear gradient. Okay, lowering the exposure, click and drag is gonna lower this. Now, because I use such a warm white balance, I'm missing some of the blues. So here comes the blue. I'm gonna bring back some of the blues because if I remember well, the sky had some blue and had some orange that morning. So now I brought back the blue. Check this out and I've darkened the top, okay? Oh, we have a very annoying sensor dust that I'm gonna take care of. 
in a minute. And then I'm going to do the same thing for the bottom. All right, I'm going to lower it, but I'm not going to add blue on the bottom. I'm just making it dark. That way, you know, people are kind of inside of the photo. Then I'm going to take a brush, a little brush, making sure the flow in the synthes and 70s, the feather that 100, I'm going to zoom in. And you can always lower the size of your brush or make it bigger with the middle mouse. Very important. That's why you need a middle mouse in Lightroom. And then I'm just going to bring a little bit of light, not much, a little je ne sais quoi, a little je ne sais quoi on the trees. You want the trees to be amazing. See the trees, you know, the part that I really like. And uh, this was, uh, I've been shooting this bridge for 17 years. This That one morning was one of the best I've seen. Just very subtle. It's not a huge deal. Look at this before, after, look at this before, after, just a little bit of light in this. And step number five is sharpening. In sharpening, I don't over sharpen my photo. What I do is I do a two step sharpening. So the first thing that I do is I go here, I go here in a detail section. And usually what I do, and that's my basic sharpening. I, even if I was at 100 ISO, I think I was on, yeah, you see, 30 second, 7.1 ISO 100. I'm just gonna add about 10 of luminance. I'm gonna zoom in at 100%. Yeah, 10 of luminance is because you always have a little bit of noise in, even at 100 ISO in the sky, and I don't want any noise like this. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add about 90 of sharpening, okay? So now that's going to sharpen everywhere, which I don't really want. I don't want sharpening to be on the, you don't see it, but sometimes if you sharpen everywhere, you get a bit of noise on, on, on the sky, which I don't want. So to avoid that, I'm going to hold on the Option key on a Mac or the Alt key on window, and then I'm gonna move the masking tool all the way like this, okay? And in white is actually what's gonna get sharpened, and in black, it's not gonna sharpen. White reveals, black conceals on every software, whether it's Lightroom or Photoshop. Okay, so now I've done a basic sharpening, but that's not all. What I'm not gonna do now is I'm gonna take a brush, and on that brush, I'm gonna add a little bit of and sharpening. And now I'm gonna sharpen just some of the buildings here in the middle. So if you do a big print, I want the bridge to be really sharp. I don't want any sharpening anywhere else, just a little bit on the bridge. You add the sharpening locally, okay? Now, I know this might be a bit hard to remember, and now I have to be completely honest. Um, below this video, I'm gonna give you the preset that I actually use every day. And this preset I'm giving you for free in the hope that I'm gonna give you enough value that one day you're gonna buy my Lightroom and my Photoshop course. That's my goal. I wanna sell you my Lightroom and Photoshop course. But first, I must provide value to you. So I'm gonna give you the preset that I use. I'm gonna show you how in a few seconds I can retouch one, two, three, four, five photos. Check it out, just using my preset. So how do you install the preset? First, you download them. Um, you got my free toolbox. Once you have my free toolbox, you just give me your email. I'm gonna send you some promotion on my Lightroom and Photoshop course. Again, in the hope that you buy it. Actually, when you download it, you'll have the opportunity to buy. You don't have to, to buy my Lightroom and Photoshop course. You don't have to buy them. Okay, and then you just go to File, Import Develop Profile and Preset, and you're gonna get this Free Toolbox 2024. You unzip that, and you go into Free Toolbox 24, you go into Lightroom Preset, and you'll see there is AI preset that I'm gonna show you for portrait, black and white preset I'm gonna show you, and, and color preset. So you select all three, and you import. I've already done that. And now check this out. Now that you have preset, these preset have these five steps included in it. So for example, this is a sunset. I, I just wanna retouch it really quickly. I'm just gonna go to sunset, preset, click one time, boom. It's gonna look weird at first because you always need to do the black and white point on every photo. So you hold on the option key, you click on the black, and like, oh, there's too much black on this one. So let's do that. And then you need to do white, the white like that. Okay, and then you can, I can adjust a little bit the exposure. And, and then of course you can fine tune the white balance. I kind of like the white balance there. I think I'm just gonna make it a bit brighter. And then I'm gonna, re I'm gonna make it straight. I'm gonna make it 16 by nine. You can click here uh, because I wanna make this as my screensaver. Boom. And now everything is done. Like, look at this, all the local dodge and burn, everything is included in the preset. It's all done, it's 20 different sliders. Now. Okay, let's retouch this one. This one is, is a blue hour photo. One click, blue hour. One of my favorite, look at this, one click. Boom, 
it's retouch. Okay, let's take this one. This one, this one, I want to make it like Ansel Adams. I mean, come on, this is tunnel view in Yosemite, lone exposure with some nice cloud. This screams to be black and white. So let's go to my black and white presets here. One click, guys. And look at that, we've got a amazing, dramatic Ansel Adams kind of photo. And of course, you know, I can go in there and there's a couple of sensor dust I want to erase because I hate sensor dust, uh, you know. The Sony 7 R5 is actually much better on that. I get a lot less sets on that because of the sensor protection when you change lens. That was a good invention. And uh, voila. And I even have AI portrait preset. Seriously, this is really cool. So I'm going to go to the AI portrait preset. And let's go to basics. No, let's go to Hollywood cold. And check this out. So this is going to, the preset is going to detect all the eyes, the lips, the face, and boom, retouch the photo. Check this out. If you go into local adjustment, you got the subject, you got the background, you got the eyes, you got the hair, the skin, everything is selected. Everything is corrected in one click. All right. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it helps you retouch better your photo. I have an amazing, amazing video coming out. 15 tricks to compose better photos. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss it. It's probably the best video I've ever done. Subscribe and I will see you later. Hope you enjoyed the free preset.